Boom, what up guys, it's Uncle Night Shift, and well, I guess tonight we're gonna finish the Gucha. We'll be doing some final adjustments on the running gear and with the gun barrels, and the rest will be about those tiny final details such as grease, polished metal and some water effects. And I also wanna tell you about one interesting trick, so yeah, let's get started! Alright, so the last video was focused on the tracks, but I made a small hiccup at the end. I've put the left track in the wrong direction. Also note how the wheel geometry is all over the place. Well, lucky me, because there are still a few small details I need to add before I finally secure everything with super glue. Let's start by polishing the wheels. For the first pair I decided to use a regular office pencil because it's more precise. This allowed me to get inside the idler wheels without putting any graphite on the rubber padding. This inner side would get polished by the guiding teeth on the tracks. It most likely won't be visible on the completed model, but... You know, it only takes just a few seconds, so... Why not? A graphite stick is gonna work better on parts which are more flat, like the metal rims on the road wheels, but here's the thing. Right now I'm polishing the inner row, or the middle row, which is then covered by three outer wheels. Now, I'm not suggesting that those wheels were scraping against each other or anything like that, but the gap between them is very tight, and I think a small chunk of gravel, mud or some loose stone would find its way between them every now and then, and this would definitely scrape the paint away. And it's just... It's just a nice little detail and... It also contributes to the overall impression of a moving operational tank, you know. Besides, it's only gonna be visible under certain angles, but yeah, I think I, I think it just looks nice. And of course it's important to pay attention and avoid polishing the rubber parts. This model is actually quite interesting because each type of wheel requires a different polishing technique. And here I had to make some graphite powder, which I would then apply with a silicone sculpting brush. I sometimes use it for sculpting tarps, but mostly for polishing metal surfaces. The drive sprocket doesn't have teeth, they're like... They're, they're more like pivots, I guess. And on the real thing they roll on a set of bearings. Yeah, sounds needlessly complicated and maintenance must have been a nightmare, but as you can tell, those pivots are circular, so a soft polishing tool is more efficient here. And the rest around them is again rubber, and we don't want to polish rubber, so again, a little care and patience was needed here. Okay, now I had to make a small adjustment using loose ground from ammo, which is the same paint I used to weather the tank and the tracks. These contact points on the idler wheels were visible through gaps in the tracks, and the contrast looked out of place, so I simply stippled some small amounts of mud there. It's very simple stuff, but it'll make a big difference. Now I was able to put the wheels back on... And... Super glue them in place. While the glue was still soft, I made sure every wheel was perfectly aligned and then I waited a few minutes until it was all rock solid. Then I could attach the tracks, and note how they are already wrapped around the sprocket. This is how I proceed if the tracks are already connected, and this also works if you have static link and length tracks which are glued together. Then I put some super glue on the axle and pushed the sprocket against the hull. With the running gear finally in place, it was time to make some grease effects. The dark wash for green vehicles from AK is very dark, thanks Captain Obvious, and it's like a blackish brown color and it simulates leaking oil and grease mixed with dust just fine. It is also matte, and you'll see why this is important in a moment. So, as you already see, the application is very simple. Just slap it around a few hubs and make sure the shape and placement of each stain is random, and then you just blend the edges with enamel thinner. Honestly, it doesn't matter how long you wait before blending. Sometimes I like to blend the paint while it's still wet, and sometimes I wait like a minute or two until it's dry to the touch. It largely depends on the effect I want to achieve, and it's a little difficult to explain, but 
If you try it for yourself, you'll see exactly what I mean, and you'll be able to pick the option which works best for you. And hey, I also added some grease on the inner side, which will be completely out of sight. It takes just a few seconds, and you never know if it won't be visible after you take some low-angle photos of the finished model, and also judges will be happy to see that you didn't forget to weather them if you decide to take your model to a modeling competition. Some delicate speckling can also make this effect more gritty and interesting, but I kept it very faint. Ok, so now we're gonna add some of those wet effects. I only applied them where most grease is concentrated, and here's the benefit of using dark wash, which, like I already said, is matte. Working like this, you'll end up with grease stains which have all three textures. Matte, satin or semi-gloss, and glossy. Not only it looks more realistic, but pre-mixed grease weathering products are only glossy, so they don't offer us that many possibilities. So. Yeah, this way the result is more authentic and easier to control, and you'll also save about 3 euros. Alright, so I think the running gear is officially done, and we can move on to the upper half of the tank. First thing I wanted to address here are the gun barrels, which are slightly misaligned, and the gap between them near the muzzle is way bigger than at the gun mantlet. I believe this is the result of paint building up on those sections which are inserted in the gun cradle, and as a result, they don't fit as they should. So I used a hobby knife to mark the insertion point, you know, just a few marks to get an overall idea, and then I scraped the unwanted paint away. Both guns now fit like a glove, and they also have a little wiggle room, which will allow me to align them. So I carefully glued them with liquid cement, added the gun mantlet, made a few more small adjustments, and the result is… well, I think it's much better than before. Maybe not totally perfect, but it's good enough for me. Ok, I think everything is securely in place, everything is straight, so the boring part is out of the way, and now we can focus on adding those small final effects. Starting, again, with a dark wash. This is a method I always do when the model is almost complete. Weathering techniques such as dust and mud effects will often pull into deep crevices and panel lines, which is, in some cases, an unwanted side effect. The point of reapplying a wash in these specific places is to get the last contrast back. But I only apply it into the deepest panel lines where a deep shadow is to be expected. These are usually around bolted plates, hatches and other openings, basically around stuff that isn't permanently welded in place. Dark wash is a good choice here because it simulates deep shadows pretty well, although we'll be getting back to this in a moment. Let's now use the same wash for some grimy effects, just like on the road wheels. The method is exactly the same as before, but one important difference when compared to other tanks is that this engine deck doesn't have any fuel caps or any other openings. I guess they're hidden under the engine bay hatches, so this makes our options quite limited. As such, I figured out a couple of places where it might increase contrast between different panels. I kept it quite limited and... Um, yeah, and I didn't use any speckling here, you know, to keep it limited. I also placed a large stain around this cover under the exhaust. It looks like some sort of maintenance access, or maybe it's where they inserted that large crank to kickstart the engine. I don't know, but yeah, I think it makes it look more, you know, interesting. And as always, I found it hard to film how I'm making streaks, so after some back and forth, I ended up with this result. And as before, I also used small amount of wet effects to make the grime glossy in a few places. Just a few small blobs, mostly around corners, to give the effect more texture. Ok, so now I want to show you that interesting technique which I mentioned in the beginning. So, I mixed these colors into a glossy, muddy color. It was roughly 5 parts loose ground, 5 parts wet effects, and 1 part dark wash. And I also diluted it with enamel thinner to make it more transparent. You'll see that I applied it into corners and around surface details, which are already surrounded by earth tones. 
Another important thing is that I didn't blend it. This is because I partially used this paint to make the smooth looking dust and mud tones more gritty. The video is gonna be pretty self-explanatory, so I'll talk about the trick behind this method, okay? So, by now most of you know that I don't use pigments, because I find them messy and hard to control. The only case where I do use them is when adding smoke effects on exhaust pipes and gun barrels, which, by the way, we'll do in this video as well. But other than that, no. I instead prefer enamel and acrylic paints, but there's one huge disadvantage to that. You see, pigments can absorb paint. This can be used to create super realistic wet stains simply by applying some enamel gloss on top of them. They will absorb the enamel gloss, which will make them look darker and you'll also be able to see the paint underneath, which in this case would be the camouflage. Enamel or acrylic paints don't work like that, because they won't absorb the enamel gloss. Tamiya paints can do that to some degree, but the result is not as good. I kept using different methods to simulate moisture, but the results were never what I wanted. But this time I just got this idea, like, totally out of nowhere. So, what if I made a semi-transparent glossy mixture, which is tinted with the earth color that I already used to weather the model, and just make it slightly darker, let's say, with a drop of dark wash? Well, that's exactly what I did, and here you can see the results. Of course we can blend it if we want to, if you know, make some smooth transitions, but this time I wanted to create all of these small blobs of water absorbed by the layer of dust. Gotta say I'm super stoked about the outcome, but now I started to feel like the dark wash which I applied into panel lines was too much. Technically it is correct, but maybe I chose a color that's way too dark for German camouflage. So I grabbed the same muddy color, diluted it into a filter-like consistency, aka more like a dirty thinner, and applied it over those panels. This luckily toned it down, at least a little bit, and you know, sometimes I just find myself going back and forth like this, especially while trying something new. I've been mostly building green and dark colored tanks in the past few years and the dark wash would work perfectly on those. Well, anyway. Applying some dry black pigment around the tip of the exhaust is an efficient and easy way to simulate soot and smoke residue. I think it's important to apply just a small amount around the tip. The inside can be completely black of course, but the outside… Eh, I think less is better. And the very same thing goes for the gun barrels, especially on German tanks. As far as I know, Germans used smokeless gunpowder, so this faint effect is more like discoloration from heat. And the very last thing is to polish all those exposed, worn and chipped edges. Just like on the road wheels, a pencil or a graphite stick is more than enough to get the job done. This effect should be applied only where chipping effects are already present. Graphite has nice metallic sheen and when combined with the previously painted dark steel chips and rust effects, the result is just… it looks good. And if you accidentally apply it somewhere where it shouldn't be or if your pencil slips, just use some enamel thinner which will dissolve the graphite. That's a free life hack. And… That's it for tonight, my mates. Or that's it for this model. Honestly, I kept thinking about adding some stowage or equipment or even something as simple as a piece of spare track or a helmet to make the tank, in, you know, to make it more lived in. But considering how small and busy the model already is, I felt like I would be cluttering it and it would be just too much of everything. So, you know, I just decided to call it a day. Overall, um, well, I gotta be honest, I'm very satisfied with the final result. Maybe I could have done a few things differently, but, you know, it's done, and the best thing is, now I can start working on another model. Ha, <laughs> unfortunately, I don't know what it will be right now, aka as I'm recording this, but I guess while you're watching this video, I'm already giving it all I have. So, 
what's the next video gonna be? Well, I guess next week it'll be that Photoshop tutorial everyone kept asking about. You know, the one where you can create your own camo profiles in your computer. And yeah, I guess after that we'll just have to wait and see. Anyway, if you watched the entire series and made it all the way to the end of this video, comment, comment, ja ja kleine Panzer gut, to confuse everyone who didn't. And as always, a huge thank you to my patrons, your help is greatly appreciated. If you want to know what I'm working on, aka the next model, and get almost daily updates for my workbench, which are often accompanied by, well, like, my philosophical thoughts, and some other perks like one week early ad-free videos, or being able to message me directly and chat about whatever you like, then consider checking it out. Anyway, I want to say a big thank you for sticking with me throughout this entire series, and I hope you'll be looking forward to the next one. In the meantime, I wish you an amazing weekend, and I'll see you mates in the next one. And yeah, it would be a night shift video without bloopers, so here are some bloopers. It is also Matt, and it is also Matt. <laughs> thanks, Captain Obvious. Thanks, Cap thanks, Captain Obvious. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Thanks, Cap. <laughs> both, gu both guns <laughs> both guns now fit like a glove and they also have a little wiggle room <laughs> both guns now fit like a glove and they also have a little wiggle room which will <laughs> both guns now fit like a <laughs> so I carefully glued them with liquid cement added the gun mantlet Made a few small, made a few small adjustments, and the re <laughs> and the result is well, I think. Applying <laughs> some dry black pigment around the tip of the exhaust is an efficient and easy way to simulate soot and soot, <laughs> soot, soot, soot. soot. <sighs>